The interior minister has now been sacked and is being held here under house arrest. But the damage has been done. We drove up into the mountains to meet some of the men who received those guns. They had a disturbing tale to tell. Well, we've now arrived at our destination, and this is the ruins of an old Portuguese fort deep in the mountains. And it's here that a man who's calling himself Commander Brylos has been hiding and keeping a number of modern assault weapons that he says he was given by the Minister for Interior. And he's going to explain to us why. Bon dia. He's a former guerrilla fighter who was sacked from the army three years ago, but he hasn't lost his appetite for military life. He runs his own private militia up here. The independent struggle entrenched a warrior mentality in many Timorese men, and most don't have jobs. What they do have now, though, is guns from the police, given to them, says Commander Rylos, for a sinister purpose. We were ordered to join members of a special police unit, and first to finish off the sack soldiers, Second, we were to finish off the other army officers who led the rebellion. And third, we were ordered to kill the leaders of the opposition parties. Commander Rylas has already agreed to hand over these weapons, but he has others. The proliferation of guns is a dangerous development for East Timor, and it took place while the country was officially still under international supervision. So what was the UN doing about it? I went to ask its representative in East Timor. His is a much reduced mission these days, but still wields a lot of influence. Did you think it was a good idea to be encouraging the interior minister to create very heavily armed special units whose guns apparently have now gone missing? I think at that time that the United Nations uh, police force uh, decided that uh, as they are withdrawing, they have to be able to uh, have a unit that can, uh, in fact, address this kind of riot, riot situations. But and I think riots don't need assault weapons. I mean, the import of weapons for these units was surely completely inappropriate. You shouldn't have been sanctioning that. I would say that at that time, that uh, there was a decision made that uh, these kind of weapons were perhaps needed for the uh, also for the border at that time. But the return of foreign troops here, just four years after the UN handed over the reins of government, tells a different story. That the UN should have intervened more, that it cast off its responsibilities far too quickly. Uh, the Security Council wanted uh, quick fix uh, solutions, wanted shortcuts to nation building because of costs. You cannot have an effective, uh, viable, uh, small business a restaurant in two years, let alone a whole country from uh, ashes of destruction. Although it was a small mission, it was... The UN has tacitly acknowledged its recent mistakes by bringing in Ian Martin, the man who ran the much smaller but successful mission for the referendum here seven years ago. It was much more successful even than you expected at the time. Yes, and I think that was uh, largely due to the East Timorese. I mean, I think the United Nations can take a lot of credit for how quickly... He and I revisited his old headquarters in Dili, now an Australian army base. Did he think the UN had failed in East Timor? I think either success or failure are much too sweeping terms to, to apply. Uh, one of the problems is that you, you apply them to expectations. The expectations were too high uh, and certainly success was declared uh, on too superficial uh, a basis. By the UN and the international community? By many people, yes, absolutely. Um, but I don't think that means that now uh, one simply rebrands it as a, as a failure. Um, in some ways, as I said to the Security Council, this can be a wake-up call, uh, a recognition that a much longer-term approach is, is needed. I went to see my friend Edu in his hometown, Baokao, and found him discussing his country's future with Colonel Falour. 
He's the third highest ranking army officer and once a renowned guerrilla commander. He outlined a bleak scenario to me of continued civil war before the underlying conflicts here can be resolved. Edu was more hopeful. The people of this country, after, after this uh, 24 years, because we have, uh, we have enemies uh, everywhere in Delhi, between the steamers and the steamers and between the steamers and Indonesia. And reconciliation is yeah. not, not finished yet. Yeah, but the, the, the reconciliation process is not finished yet. But uh, I think after we cross this uh, reconciliation, uh, this is, maybe this is the last uh, reconciliation process. Thing. But East Timor has taken a huge step backwards. Edu, the one-time furniture entrepreneur, is now clearing scrub with his relatives to try his hand at farming. It's not what he dreamed of when he helped his country to win its independence. But independence, as he and the rest of East Timor have discovered, is just the first step in the back-breaking task of building a nation. Jonathan had reported.